Hey everyone, Brennan Snyder here, how are you? Thanks so much for joining me and welcome to a new series I'm starting called What's on the Wall? I'm referring to that wall of CDs that's right there behind me. Uh, but we'll be talking about the whole collection. I did recently just film a video called What's in my 12,000 CD collection? But I tried to give you guys a broad overview of things. And I obviously didn't pull out all 12,000 CDs when I did it. Despite that, though, the video was still over 30 minutes long. And I wanted to do a video series where I could actually go through stuff uh, much more individually and really give you guys some insight into what I have in the collection. Uh, so we'll be doing that here. I'll be going through this. We're going to be starting in the A's and going through. But if we get on little tangents about a particular artist and something else I may have, I may reach over and grab that stuff. But all in all, this is to see what is on the music wall. So we'll do that here in just a bit. Before we get started, if you're new to my channel and haven't already hit the subscribe button, please do. Also leave a comment, hit like, all those things do help support my channel. I'd greatly appreciate it. And of course, as an added bonus, if you turn on notifications, you're going to stay up to date on everything going on in the world of music, including what's going on here on this channel where we're talking about what's on the wall. So let's go ahead and start in on this. Uh, as I said, we're going to start in the uh, A section here and we'll start pulling stuff out and we'll go through it. All right, so we're going to start in the A's and kind of run through and I'm going to individually go through all of these and try to give you guys some insight into why I have these. But if you recall in the previous video when I did the What's in My 12,000 CD Collection, there's another rack that has 800 into it. I, I refer to it as the Wall of Wonder. And that has 800 CDs that I pull from all the time, sort of my, my favorites of everything. So the stuff that's out here is actually like overflow. I do have ACDC and Aerosmith and stuff in this, but it's not all the major albums because those are in the Wall of Wonder. So if you're missing stuff like that when I'm pulling it out, just think about that sort of standard uh, albums, famous albums, the, you know, ACDC's Back in Black and Highway to Hell and stuff like that. I do have those, but they're over in the Wall of Wonder. Let's go ahead and jump into this though. Starting with ACDC in here, I've got the live album that came out, I think it was 91. I have the single disc edition, but I do have a deluxe edition. If you remember that, it was the limited edition in the cardboard long box style case that opened up, had the dollar bill in it. So I do have a two CD one. This was a Best Buy exclusive for the Plug Me In uh, DVD home video that they did. And it had uh, three unreleased live tracks on it. Rock and Roll, Damnation, Dirty Deeds, Done Dirt Cheap, and Thunderstruck. So a little EP there. I have the Live at River Plate. You can see that I keep all my live albums separate because I'm just not as into those as much as the studio albums. I have uh, moving into Aerosmith, case in point, Classics Live. But what I like about this one is that it's the both albums, Classics Live 1 and 2, all on one disc. And so uh, definitely enjoy having that. And then I have this Best Of, which is uh, more... Uh, fleshed out, I should say, than the original Simple uh, Greatest Hits. And this one spans 73 to 88. And so there are 15 regular tracks going all the way from uh, first album, Dream On, up through Chip Away to Stone, which just came off of, uh, I think it was called um, Gems. And then they add in two bonus tracks, uh, Sweet Emotion, the 1991 Thoner remix, and One Way Street Live. So I like, again, having some of these things that have bonus content or enhanced in some manner beyond what the originals were. Um, Aerosmith compilation from the Geffen Records years called Young Lust. It is a two CD thing. Lots of rare B-sides and things included on that, which makes that totally worthwhile. Aerosmith Big Ones compilation that came out in the early 90s. Um, having uh, Walk on Waters on here, that was a new track at the time. Deuces Are Wild, I think that came from the Beavis and Butthead soundtrack. Blind Man was a new track. So a number of uh, newer songs on here along with their Geffen Records uh, years. Another compilation, Oh Yeah, and it's got that lenticular cover on it. Two CD was the first time that both their Columbia catalog and Geffen Records years had appeared on one thing. Two new songs were on this, Girls of Summer and Lay It Down. 
And then this one here, same thing, but a single disc collection of it uh, called Devil's Got a New Disguise. But this is a UK edition of it, which has a different track listing than here in the US. Um, I like this one because it didn't run sequentially. So it kicks off with Dude Looks Like a Lady, Loving an Elevator, Living on the Edge. Uh, instead of kicking off with Dream On, that is on here, but it's later on. This focuses much more on the later years of the band. And it did have two new songs on it, Sedona Sunrise and Devil's Got a New Disguise. So again, when they have that bonus stuff or the um, new tracks that are on these, I like compilations. This is one live album I do like. Uh, Rock in the Joint, Aerosmith, of course, at the Hard Rock Hotel and Casino. 12 tracks, so single disc. I prefer single disc live albums to doubles. And it just had a good mix of things. It had some really newer stuff on it, like Beyond Beautiful um, on here. But it also had classics like Same Old Song and Dance and Seasons of Wither. Draw the Line was on here. So it had a number of sort of what I would call sort of deep cuts, things that weren't played very often along with the hits. And uh, this one, uh, Aerosmith, Rocks at Donington, 2014, Blu-ray. So two CD show plus the concert itself. We move into Brian Adams, his debut album, self-titled release. Then You Want It, You Got It, which is a really good album. Has song Lonely Nights on it, Jorn. Uh, covered that. If you're a metal fan, you'll know that who that is. Cuts Like a Knife. And we've got uh, this one, uh, Into the Fire. And again, the albums that you see that are missing from here, I do have the entire Brian Adams collection. So those are just in On the Wall of Wonder. His best of, So Far So Good. Which incidentally, that song did not appear on the, the collection here, uh, but it would later get a release anyways. 18 Till I Die. You have the MTV Unplugged, which I didn't really care for at the time when it came out. Sort of grew on me in recent uh, years. This was a good album. I don't even know if this got a release in the U.S. at the time called On a Day Like Today. This is where he started to change his sound and get more uh, into the sort of pop sensibilities of what were going on in the 90s. Another compilation, Best of Me, but Brian Adams has always done good compilations where there's new songs, like having that song, Best of Me, is on here and doing some remixes or different, uh, you know, takes on something. But uh, this was a later era compilation, so it didn't focus as heavily on the stuff the way that the So Far So Good compilation did. Spirit, uh, he did a soundtrack, Brian Adams, uh, for this movie, and it is a fantastic Brian Adams album, unfortunately, kind of got lost in the shuffle, being that it was a soundtrack. I didn't even know he did this until a few years after it had come out and I found out about it. Uh, but just really great. The song Here I Am is very, very good off of that. Uh, live album here, Japan 2000 CD DVD. And then we have this one, Room Service, another one that uh, didn't get a U.S. release for quite a while, like eight or nine months at least. I had an import copy long before it ever came out here in the States. Unfortunately, he just doesn't get the love here in the U.S. the way that he does in other places. Bare Bones, a very stripped down acoustic. I think it's literally just him and an acoustic guitar. Um, done, you know, I don't, I'm trying to remember if this is actually live or this is the studio rendition of it, but very, very bare bones release. Uh, it wasn't something that I ended up enjoying as much as I thought I was going to. Uh, Shine a Light is uh, one of the newer releases. Uh, there's now a newer album than this one here, but uh, this one was a good album, except the track number two on here, That's How Strong Our Love Is, which features Jennifer Lopez, I think just totally broke the flow of the album. And I have had a very hard time getting past that song. I've kind of learned to accept it since then, but I just don't like it. Everything else on the album is really good, but just that song really breaks the flow at the second thing. Carmina Peace, Rockers and V8. It is a two album set. So two CDs in here, each one on its own disc, but he had two solo albums back in the day. And I really like uh, both of the albums, although one is more soul funk sounding and the other one actually rocks a bit. Another Carmine A Piece release, Ultimate Guitar Zeus collected up together a, a number of tracks where he had killer guitar players guesting on here. We got Ted Nugent, Brian May, Slash, 
Steve Morse, Richie Sambora, Ingve Malmsteen, Vivian Campbell, Ty Tabor from King's X. Then we move into Axe, and this was a uh, two disc collection of the Atlantic or Atco Records recording, which is owned by Atlantic, but um, that's the complete recording. So three albums done, you know, like that. Um, 20 Years From Home. So this was re-recordings that Axe did, uh, spanning the years from 77 to 97, and there's a best of volume one. I still need to get uh, the volume two in that. Album of theirs called Five. Axe is a great underrated, um, I don't really consider them a metal band, but they did have some metal leanings, more Southern rock metal, if you will. Uh, rock and Roll Party in the Streets album. This is a best of that covers... Um, basically through their whole career, a number of tracks. So you can see those albums down the middle there. And this one, Final Offering. Don't know if this is going to be the last album. Really hope that it isn't with that kind of title because it was so good. I actually think this is my favorite release from the band. It's that good. Moving to some Angel. Got the debut album there. Not as big a fan of the older stuff. Um, hell of a band as I am of the newer stuff, incidentally. And yet, they really sound like two different bands. Um, I've got White Hot. And then this was a reunion album they did around the early 2000s, I think it was, called In the Beginning. And then here's one of the newer albums, Risen, which I think is really great. The other one is uh, such a new release, just having come out last year, that it's still actually with the 2023 releases that I have in a box, as I like to sort of hang on to it like that. Because for me, a lot of the stuff, as it's released, I associate with that year and with other releases. So as I'm listening to certain things, I may think I want to pull out other stuff that came out around that time. So those don't get filed away for a couple of years, actually. The band Alaska, which featured Bernie Marsden from... White Snake uh, doing a much more sort of 80s sounding keyboard laden synth album uh, than the hard rock stuff of White Snake. Alaska Live album that they did. And you can, as you can see, I'm a, I'm a, I am a completist as I had talked about in that previous uh, video of the overview of the stuff from the 12,000. But here you are actually finally getting to see some of that. All right, an April Wine album called uh, Walking Through Fire. This one is a harder one to come by. Frigate, one of the reunion or later day era albums of April Wine. Attitude, both of this one and Frigate came from the 90s. And then Back to the Mansion, their last studio album of original material. I don't know about the final album, which was a blues-based album. That may have been original songs too, but the last rock album was this one here. They did make one blues album before the end. And then uh, Greatest Hits Live, 2003, uh, same time frame as the um, studio album. So these two were uh, around the same time period. All right, then we move into Angel City. Uh, simply known as Angel, um, or The Angels in Australia, but here in the U.S. they became Angel City. Uh, Skin and Bones, a later day album of theirs. See here, because this was an Australian only release, um, it has uh, just the Angels there. And then we have their Finest Hour, a collection of theirs. So... I knew them because of the band Great White, who had covered some stuff of theirs like Can't Shake It, and I think a couple other tunes, in fact, but I also knew other songs like Am I Ever Gonna See Your Face Again, which The Sweet covered, and I think um, uh, Fastway might have covered it, but I knew some of these songs before I had gotten into the band, so I picked up this best of and found out that I really liked who they were, even though I didn't know them back in the day. Moving into some Greg Almond and Almond Brothers stuff. Uh, this album here called I'm No Angel. I think that's probably his most famous solo album. I've got a decade of hits, 69 to 79. Although I'm not really into that early era of this stuff. I definitely like the later era. So um, Mycology, uh, this one here, an anthology of later stuff when they uh, reunited and they were on uh, Sony and Epic. Seven Turns is part of what's on that. And then we've got this album here, which is Shades of, what is it called? It's called uh, Shades of Two Worlds. Um, but my favorite is 
where it all began. I love this one. This one was the album in 1994 when I was working in a record store. I was hearing this, didn't really know who they were, knew the name, fell in love with this, and then went backwards. But that's why I definitely like the later era stuff. And then I've got Hitting the Note. And if you saw one of my recent uh, New Music Finds episodes, you know I picked up the three reunion era albums from the, the 80s. That kind of spooked me for a minute when that fell over. Um, Almond Betts Band, so the kids of uh, Dwayne Allman and uh, Dickie Betts uh, formed their own band. And if uh, you want to hear some continuation of Allman Brothers style music, that is a great thing there. A group called the Artful Dodger, I think they're a uh, European or British band. Very much sounds like early Aerosmith, and that's why I picked this up here. Honor Among Thieves, don't really know anything about them. Very hard to come by any of their stuff, although there is a... Uh, compilation album that is out um, of their first four albums that was on uh, Real Gone Records, I think it was called. Uh, but I think that's actually already out of print as well. Move into America, one of their later day albums. This was a, a promo advance copy for Here and Now. Had some new stuff, but it also had some old stuff on here as well. And then a Best of America. I have a box set of theirs. It's actually behind me. Uh, so I do have all of their albums, just simply called History. Then Aries, remember them from the 80s. So these guys, this is a reunion era album. Aries, um, forget who was the key member uh, in the group, but uh, had a famous person that was in the group and uh, continued on with this. And then we've got two more here. Archangels, Charlie Sexton was one of the, the guys in this group here. It was sort of a who's who blues rockers getting together, made the one and only album. And Avery, a uh, great uh, late 70s era rock. This was reissued by Sony Music Products on the Rewind label. Very bombastic, over the top, light sticks, but maybe even more so than that. And that's just this first top rack here. And we've spent 15 minutes, but I did one by one so that you can see what it is. Uh, if this series goes well, I will do more like this and we will continue on with Atlanta Rhythm Section, Bon Jovi, Black Crows, Blue Oyster Cult, uh, you name it. I've got all that sort of stuff in here and we'll keep doing that. But let me know what you think of this and whether or not you wanna know more about the exact individual albums that are with all in my collection. All right, everyone, take care, have a good one, and I'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye.